Welcome everyone to this episode of the Palmetto Guardian. I'm Sergeant Chelsea Weaver. I'm Specialist Turner Horton. And today we have a special guest with us. I'm going to let him introduce himself and then we're just going to go right into today's topic. So my name is James Hall. I work for the University of South Carolina as a school certifying official. Okay. And I know today specifically we're not talking about what you do at the school, but something that you've done um, above and beyond, I guess, in a sense. So could you kind of explain what that is that you did? So back in 2019, I decided to uh, start looking into military uh, folks that have been at the university. Um, didn't know much about the university because whenever I came here as a student in 2014, after uh, being medically retired from the Marine Corps, um, I'm originally from Pennsylvania and didn't know much about South Carolina. Uh, so started working at the university, um, started looking at, was, was there a military presence here? I mean, they were, it was uh, founded in 1801. So we just started looking around and, and found 28 names from World War I. And that's basically what started this whole uh, journey. And uh, now we're up to 382 names and counting. So, Oh, wow. So being in the Marines, did that kind of spark your interest of wanting to research these things and find these names and these individuals who served and also attended USC? Uh, and initially, no. Um, I'm originally from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, uh, which is about 30 miles from Gettysburg. So, you know, before I joined the Marine Corps, pretty much every weekend was spent over in Gettysburg, uh, walking the battlefields and looking at, you know, landmarks and where people were and things like that. So, it's always history has always been a big part of my uh, uh, growing up. So whenever I found out about these guys, I was like, man, I wonder if there's anything from the Civil War. So started there and, and worked our way, and we, we found people from uh, who died during the uh, Battle of the Alamo in Texas uh, up until um, 2020 in, in Afghanistan. So it's, uh, it's just been a hobby of mine. And I just wanted to see if I could do my bit and see where the university left off and where I could help out. So what's the process to be able to figure that out? I mean, I'm sure you have to have names and all that kind of stuff. So what kind of information do you need to be able to figure these things out? Um, I've only got a bachelor's in interdisciplinary studies. Um, So I'm not a professionally trained uh, historian or anything like that. Uh, what I've done and, uh, um, I guess you could say, uh, you know, process that I've done is I look at the various calendar or, uh, catalogs from, you know, back to 1811, uh, and work my way forward and using what they called, uh, Garnet and Black. It was a sort of like a yearbook from 1899. They started until 1994 and they had all the students' names in it. During the 40s, they had, like, who was serving during World War II. Um, so I just started checking those names off, who was serving, who wasn't, uh, where they were where they were at, and things like that. So I just did process of elimination. I was a police officer in, in uh, part of my life. So, you know, so I, I just took the detective route and just started digging, and, like, who, who was this guy? Where'd he come from? What was he doing? And, you know, went the methodical route of like that. Hmm. Did you do any kind of work with our military museum here to find any of those names? Or did you put out any information to the public to where you were trying to get information from them that you possibly couldn't obtain by searching names and stuff like that? Central Communications did a, uh, found out about my story in 2020, I believe, 2020, 2021 and around there. Uh, and they wrote a piece on me about what I was doing and, and uh, if they, if the public knew anything to get in touch with me, basically. And that, that was very helpful. Um, from that piece, I was actually able to meet uh, a sister of uh, one of our Vietnam guys uh, that uh, was killed in, uh, in a helicopter crash in uh, 1968. Uh, so... I met with her and she was gracious enough to give me her 
his diploma, his, some of his medals, some of his awards, uh, pictures, family pictures, things like that. So she was, she was the one that really brought this thing to light. And, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful for, to be able to have some of the stuff that, you know, we normally probably wouldn't have. Mm-hmm. Um, so the connection was very good on her, with her and, and her, uh, brother Joe who died. With that, are you kind of archiving these names or are you creating displays or like, what are you doing with these names um, and any more information that you're receiving from them to be able to document it in the USC's history as well as even the military's? So initially, I, I just put it in a Excel spreadsheet, started digging, uh, got a subscription through Ancestry, newspapers.com. And just started digging that way. Uh, as I'm finding these folks, you know, I'm putting them in documents and then I'm, you know, doing a biographical uh, sketch on them. And so what I've d- decided to do is take a holistic view of them. So who they, who they were uh, uh, the kids of, uh, when they were born, where they were born, um, what they did at, uh, before USC or South Carolina College. Um, through through the university and military service and then if possible we try to find them like who their uh opposing uh forces were so you know we had a guy that we were just talking about yesterday um they were both brothers one fought for the south one fought for the north and we i believe we they were both in conflict with each other at Gaines mills one died and one was promoted for uh for gallantry. Um, so that type of story and things like that and making sure that, you know, those stories aren't lost to time. Um, so Memorial day weekend is coming up and, um, it's a time for us to reflect and remember those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. So how does it feel to you not only to serve in the military, but also to bring, light and life to these names of individuals who paid that ultimate sacrifice um, and being able to accomplish the amount that you've been able to research and find. How does that make you feel to be a part of that? And ultimately, I mean, you started it as well. I am beyond humbled. Um, My leadership at the university has been more than gracious with uh, taking some time away from my daily duties to work on this project. Uh, after all of these uh, names are found, uh, we're always going to find more. Um, I, my plan is to give the, that document and all these names and all these stories to the University of South Carolina so future generations can like look up their ancestor or look up a person that you know they're studying about or what their thoughts were or why they did what they did so I don't want to keep it to myself I want to make sure that future generations can uh, share share this with their family and their family's family they're getting ready to re- uh, renovate the World War uh, Memorial um, it's on the street of uh, Sumter and Pickens on the corner there um once that's renovated, we're looking at making part of that building a uh, like a museum. That's that's what my goal is to show these folks. You know, here's their articles. Here's what they did. Here's here's faces to the names and and things like that. We're building and we're currently building a website uh, to look at things like that on a virtual scale. Now, does USC do they have a historian? They have a um, a university arch- archivist, uh, okay. Elizabeth West. Um, she handles all the uh, official documents for the university. Um, but currently there's no military historian that's dedicated to what I do. Um, and that's what I'm eventually going to try to uh, uh, build, is build a, a position within the university that – handles special populations like uh, military and, and things like that because uh, there's just so much. And, you know, there's, you know, uh, 
and you know nobody really knows unless you knew the person physically so you know getting to know what these guys did and 2005 and 2020 i mean if you didn't know the family it's pretty much lost yeah it's incredible how much work goes into it because when we were doing our 20th year anniversary of 9-11 that was a huge ordeal and we had a big production and we created essentially a documentary and um, having to go back and pull all that research and talk to people and the interviews that we did and the scripts that we wrote and everything that we shot for it and like the photos and video we were able to get from those individuals who were a part of those specific things that we were highlighting. It's just incredible to see the amount of work that goes into something like that. And I can only imagine the amount of work that you've gone into with finding over 300 plus names and receiving all this information and some artifacts and all that kind of stuff and building that into hopefully like you said, a museum one day. I mean, it, it's just incredible. I can't even imagine the amount of work and effort that it's been to be able to do something like that. And you, and you find, like, stories that are, you know, is this really the guy? Did he really do this, or did she really do this? I mean, um, between the uh, WASPs and World War II, where women were uh, training fighter pli- pilots here in Columbia to go overseas and and things like that i mean that's another whole topic that could you know be discovered and and things like that um you know from crashes in kershaw county from a guy in world war ii to you know it's just there's so much information and so much history within the walls of south carolina that you know it's hard to nail down every story and you know I'm, i'm just glad to be a part of it Mm. Now, since you're still continuing to build this, and hopefully this podcast will get out to a lot of people who have served as well as attending USC, um, if they have any information or have names or things like that, how can they contact you to be able to give you that information? Sure. Um, You can uh, always contact me by email, Um, jlhull, H-U-L-L, at email dot sc dot edu um shoot me a line and i'll be more than willing to you know set up a time to talk or through email whatever you whatever the person feels comfortable with uh the end goal is just to honor their sacrifice what's the vetting like if someone calls or sends you an email or calls you or something mm-hmm. with like hey this person this family member did this did that how do you vet that? So the Office of the Registrar has files and cases upon cases of microfilm from, I think they, they can go back to like the 1870s. Um, so we'll find the name. We'll see if he, he or she attended USC. Uh, even if it was one class, we got uh, we got a guy that was a hospital corpsman and, and uh, that fought on Iwo Jima and was killed on Iwo Jima. Our records show that he only attended like one class and then was sent overseas. So, you know, as long as they did some time in any university campus, we'll, we'll run with it. Um, newspapers have been a tremendous help in the past. Um, and then you just go ahead and, and, uh, document everything and just keep on searching and most likely they're in those yearbooks. Uh, sadly, they don't make those anymore. So maybe this is a plug to get the funding going again for, uh, the Garnet and Black yearbooks because they've been a tremendous help for, for me anyway. So you're looking back and you're finding these soldiers who have, who have passed. Is there, is the same process being applied to people who are like ROTC, like at USC, like right now, are they, like, are you already, or do you plan to already, like, build their bio while they're, you know, obviously still living? And then at some point, if they were to pass, then you you already kind of have that first part done? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I saw their first um, photograph 
class photo for the army uh, last week. Um, so we're looking into like at least get their names. If we can get their names, we can figure out like what year they graduated or something like that. Um, but that is another avenue that I would like to um, to do is to get the guys that are you know actively serving um, and you know follow their career. Um, so, you know, that's, that's another, another piece of the pie, but, uh, currently I'm one guy, so. <laughs> you need an <laughs> army of people for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, you kind of started from nothing and built it to what it is now. Where do you see this going in the future? I know you've kind of talked about things that you, um, like funding and possible, um, future plans, but like, where do you see this going, especially after you're gone and you leave it to somebody else that's following in your footsteps, I guess. We'd really like to establish a good rapport with the history department and because it could be a public, uh, uh, public history, uh, majors, um, you know, that vein of it, it could be archives. It could be, uh, MLLIS, uh, library sciences. Um, there's a ton of ways that we can get, you know, the, the history out to people. Uh, so, you know, we'd like a collaboration with the university, um, you know, horizontally across different colleges, different spectrums, different viewpoints, everything else. We want to make sure that everybody is represented. Um, so, you know, our best, uh, process and way forward is to get as many people as as we can involved and they have a love of history and a love of telling stories all right well is there anything else you would like to add or talk about um what you guys are doing um or just anything in general so yesterday we had our first walking tour um to my knowledge we've we have never done one before uh, as far as specifically uh, looking at the military history side of the university. So it was a outstanding success. Um, we planned on having a max of 20. Um, my threshold was thinking that there was going to be maybe five to seven actually show up because uh, the tickets were free. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty hard to do sometimes with, a Wednesday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, so our final count yesterday was 28 uh, that just showed up. And some I had tickets, some of them didn't. We, all the pictures that I've seen so far of the event has been, everybody was engaged. Everybody was really looking at, you know, what we were bringing to the table. And, hey, this is where this person slept at. Here's where he died at. Here's the story behind his his uh, life. And so, you know, anybody that wants to, uh, you know, come out and help, uh, we're going to be doing another uh, tour probably in the fall, uh, maybe September, October time frame. Um, and uh, we'll do another tour. And obviously the names will be different. We just picked about 15 names yesterday. Um, but we're going to, you know, switch it up. We have a, like I said, we uh, have 382 keeps counting every day. So, um, any, uh, you know, it'll always be different. So they'll, they'll get a better experience and a different experience every time that they go through the tour. Okay. So when you say walking tour, like you're saying that you're walking around and like explaining different people's stories and stuff like that. Yeah. So yesterday's tour, we uh, started at our office at 901 Sumter street. Um, walked over to the state house, over to the, um, uh, I call it the Emancipation uh, Monument, uh, there on the uh, left side of the uh, state house, um, and talked, told the story of uh, Stephen Swales. Um, you know, he fought with the Union. He was uh, 54th Massachusetts, um, fought at uh, Battery Wagner, um, and survived, actually became a trustee at the USC, uh, in 1876. Um, but another student, uh, that graduated from, uh, USC, uh, was the guy that built, uh, Fort Wagner and he died there. So 
being able to tell their story and, hey, this is where this person slept and this is where they went to school and this is where, you know, they they did their life before, you know, entering military service. So. So for those who would potentially be interested in the next one, um, do they just look out for flyers or like where's the information put out for those who would be interested in attending later in the fall? So um, I would keep it. We did a, a Facebook um, uh, media campaign, Instagram, LinkedIn, things like that. So if you, uh, you know, Google uh, Veterans and Military Affairs at USC, um, it'll come up with our web page and uh, just keep in touch with us on the social media side. We'll also have flyers, but, you know, where do you put them? So mm-hmm. social media is, is the way that we're, we're looking at going. Okay. Awesome. Well, we really appreciate you coming in and talking with us. I mean, this is very interesting. So it would be awesome to see one day that there's a museum with all these uh, names and all the stories and stuff that you've been collecting and um, just to learn the history of those who have served as well as who are a, who are a part of Columbia and South Carolina as well. Um, so we really appreciate you coming in and talking to us about it. And hopefully we can have you come back in around September, fall, and kind of talk more about um, that upcoming walking tour. Yes, ma'am. And, uh, you know, thank you for having me. And, um, you know, uh, come see us. Awesome. Well, before we close out, I do want to say that um, Memorial Day weekend is coming up. So please be safe and remember that Memorial Day is a time for us to remember those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. And um, so just always remember their sacrifices as well as their families. Um, So it was great to have this topic um, going into Memorial Day weekend. So we hope you guys enjoy this. But if you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and we will catch you guys in the next episode.